I was inspired to give this speech because I saw a headline in the newspaper that most Americans cannot come up with a thousand bucks cash. Hmm. And I was shocked. And as I read the article, I was even more shocked because it didn't really matter what their income level was. People who were making a lot of money didn't have any cash on hand, as well as people that didn't have too much uh, uh, income as well. And uh, when I did a little more research on this speech, I found out that 61% of Americans cannot come up with $1,000. 50% cannot come up with $500. And 21% have no savings whatsoever. I hope I can inspire you tonight if you're in that any of those categories that you can change. And if you actually have $1,000 that you'll try to even do better if you need to in the future. One of the things that I thought of as I was thinking about this is a story by Dickens and David Copperfield. That's quite a famous story. You may remember it. There was a Mr. McCaber. He was a landlord and should have been a middle class guy, should have been okay financially. But he had a tendency to spend. And at one point he wanted a nice pair of leather boots. He didn't have the cash, but he bought it on time. No problem, he could pay by the month. But he got behind on his payments. And back in those days, there was no protection from creditors. They could come and bang on your door any time of the day or night. And if you didn't pay eventually, they'd throw you right into debtor's prison. I never could quite understand that. You know, if you can't pay when you're working, how are you going to pay when you're in jail? I mean, that didn't make a lot of sense. But the idea was that you had the money, but you just were holding out on the, on the creditor. His wife had to hawk all of her possessions that her, were her heirlooms to pay for his bills. But it didn't matter. He still ended up in debtor's prison. And finally, when he kind of got a little bit older and a little bit wiser, he came up with this saying that's quite a, uh, famous. I'm going to translate it into American dollars rather than English pounds. It goes something like this. Income, $50,000 a year. Expenses, $49,999. Result, happiness. Income, $50,000 a year. Expenses, $50,000 result, misery. So he finally came to that truth that it's very important to have your expenses less than what your income is. And as I was looking at this a little bit more, I kind of remembered one of our fellow Toastmasters, uh, one of our previous members. And they were going along quite well, had a new car, uh, lived in a nice house, two little babe, uh, two small children, and then the husband lost his job. And quickly, they had no place to live. They lost their car. And if it hadn't been for the generosity and charity of their relatives and their friends, they'd either been living in the street or in the back of a car somewhere. And it took them over a year to get back to the point where they actually could live in their own uh, uh, place again. So if they had had some uh, savings, obviously that wouldn't have been quite so devastating to them. Now, there are five types of financial personalities, and the one we're kind of emphasizing tonight is the spenders. Hey, the money comes in, they have no problem spending it. If they see it and they like it, they're going to buy it. Their motto is, spend first, think later. Now, these are actually pretty nice people because they're generous with their friends. They're usually generous with charities. But sometimes they maybe get themselves in a little bit of trouble, like Mr. McCaber. Then there's the savers, and we might call them the skin flats and the tight ones. And boy, I'll tell you, they, they don't want to see those dollar bills flying out of their wallet. And if they do have to spend something, they want a deal. They want it the cheapest they can find it. They're going to cut those coupons, and they're going to get the best deal possible. Third one is the risk adverse. And uh, if a good deal comes along, they're going to be very critical. I don't know if I put my money in that stock market. Eh, that's pretty chancy. Could go down, you know. A risk-adverse people, very conservative in their handling of money. 
And then there's the gamblers. And to them, it's a big game. If they see a, something, a deal that they want to go for, they're going to throw the money in and let the dice roll, and maybe they'll win big, and maybe they'll lose it all. They could end up being rich, or they could lose everything. And then finally, the ones that I had never even heard about before, and I don't know why they got this name, but they're called the Flyers. And these are people that just don't care about money. If they had a lot of money, they'd be happy. If they had no money, it wouldn't matter to them. They just kind of ignore money and go on with life like that. So uh, different approaches to money, but the spenders are the ones that sometimes get themselves into trouble. And my challenge to you is, wouldn't it be nice not to have a car payment? You know, if you, if you took that, when you get your car paid off, if you just kept paying yourself that payment every month, it wouldn't be too long before you could afford to buy a car for cash and not have a payment anymore. anymore. And wouldn't it be nice when your aunt, it came time for your annual vacation that you'd actually save for that vacation and you could go on a vacation with your mind at ease knowing that uh, when you came back you weren't going to have a big credit card debt to pay because you'd gone on vacation. And wouldn't it be nice to have that thousand dollars or even more so that if you got into a fender bender and it wasn't covered, that first thousand dollars wasn't covered by your insurance, you'd have that thousand dollars to pay for it. Or if you had to go to the hospital and you had to put up some money for the hospital, you'd have the dollars there. Or if something happened in your house that you needed some money for, your hot water heater went out, or anything else that could be a, an emergency, you have cash in your hand, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But most importantly of all, besides those types of things to save money for, is the inevitable time that some of us are, have already come to, and that's retirement. And you young people think, well, that's a long time in the future. I don't have to worry too much about that. But let me tell you, it's going to happen much sooner than you think. And it's great to have that uh, savings going on so that you are ready for retirement. So again, I think it's just uh, an amazing fact that so many people don't even have a thousand dollars. I just almost uh, find it almost difficult to believe. But I think if we uh, can follow Dickens' rule and make sure that our expenses are less than our income, then we too can have financial happiness. Mr. Toastmaster. Oh, yeah.